Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of our 3ds Max tutorials. My name is Arnold Faller and today we're going to take a look at interior lighting in 3ds Max and Arnold. We take the techniques that we have learned in our previous parts about exterior lighting and uh, take all the light types and all the, all the methods and light and interior situation. First of all, which file did I use to, uh, to, to demonstrate uh, the techniques for you guys today? Um, there is um, a couple of uh, files that you can use. For example, if you, uh, if you check out the arnoldrenderer.com, so the, the channel for Arnold Renderer, there is a couple of uh, learning scenes and one of them would be the interior room the, the, the link to this page will be included in the description. So that is something that you can try it with. What I did is I went to a website called Open3DModel, open3dmodel.com, and it's a, it's a resource for a lot of uh, th uh, 3D, uh, 3D models, and uh, you can use them for free for personal use and educational use. So what I did is I went into the scene, uh, we're looking for an interior scene, here is more than 4,000 interior scenes found. And then I'm not sure which, I think I took uh, the luxury living room interior scene. The problem here, not the problem, the challenge here was that the scene is not made for Arnold Renderer. It is, a, that's not the scene actually, it's a little different. Uh, the scene was made for V-Ray, so what I basically had to do is I went into the scene, I kicked out all the lights, which is good because we want to start from the beginning in interior lighting, and uh, I also changed all the materials in the scene to one white grayish uh, material in Arnold. Again, about Arnold materials, we're going to talk in one of the upcoming episodes. So, but it's okay to do all the things here with the uh, interior space that you can download from the Arnold website. The, the interior space looks pretty much, uh, not the same, but pretty similar. It's an interior space. Light is only coming in from the east, so that is from the right side. So we have an opening here on the right side. Let me go into a into a view here. So you have the op that's not an opening. That's just the, the 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 back faces. So we have the windows here on the right side, and we have a couch and a chair and some tables and so on. So let's look from the top and let's go through our topics that we're going to do today. The, uh, the first thing that we're going to start with is we're going to create a, a physical camera. So from the top here, in the top view, I'm going to uh, create and I choose camera and a physical camera, which I place in my scene with click and drag and then uh, drop the target. Uh, while the camera is still selected, I go to modify and I'm going to use a 24 millimeter, 24 millimeter camera. So pretty much a nice wide angle that shows me the whole uh, space. And you can also see here on the left side that everything is in Chinese, so it's pretty hard to navigate in this scene. So let's jump into the uh, into the view for the for this camera and uh, it's of course it's on the floor it's at the height of zero so I use my middle mouse to simply move up the lighting that you see right now is the default lighting coming from behind me and uh, as soon as I put in the first light this is all uh, is all gone let me quickly turn off the geometry uh, stuff here so that I can simply find whatever elements are added so I just added one physical camera and we're going to do the lighting here for this one physical camera let me go a little bit further back with my camera so there's a little bit more that's it good yes here it is yeah so we got the thing in the front um, what we're going to do is now the camera that i added and if i select my physical camera here and i go to modify it has the default exposure value of six so this is what we usually start with when we add a physical camera uh, the lighting, and I hope you have seen the, uh, the exterior lighting. It is really necessary that you watch it first because I'm not going to explain a lot of uh, the settings for all those things that we already did in the other video. So spend 40 minutes of quality time watching this video and then uh, come back for the interior uh, if you have troubles following me. Uh, we, we're going to start with uh, placing a sky dome and then rendering, a couple, uh, rendering for a couple seconds and we see what the problems are when we place a sky dome 
in the scene. Uh, the sky dome, I'm going to place it here in top view, but it's not necessary. Create lights and switch the, uh, to Arnold light and then choose the Arnold light and the type of light is a sky dome. Uh, just click anywhere and place the sky dome. It's not necessary uh, to place it correctly. Uh, I'm also going to, uh, I'm going to click uh, uh, select it and go to modify and make sure that the, sorry, there's something I did before. There is that the, okay, let me, let me quickly, I, did, I should have done a reset, sorry. Uh, is the intensity also? No. Yes. Yes, it is. One, sorry. So now we are at uh, the default setting and the light shape is usually off. So um, here's my sky dome and let's jump right into the camera view and render, uh, render this view. So uh, I'm going to do the very beginning with a, uh, not the production rendering, but the active shade mode, of course, in Arnold renderer. And, of, and I'm also using the physical camera and lock it here. The default settings, minus three, three, two, and actually, this is a default one. So uh, let's try that. And here you can see right away, this is what the Sky Dome gives me. The Sky Dome produces a lot of light and all the light also gets into the uh, geometry quite deep. So that's, it's pretty bright. It's, uh, remember the material is almost white. Uh, the one thing that we do, you don't see, there is no background, no white background, because I have not turned on the button uh, that the light is visible. So if I select my Arnold light and turn light shape visible, that will change. And now also this part here is uh, white. You will, we already see right away before we render much, much more that the uh, that the that there's a lot of noise coming up here. So the first thing with the uh, with the large opening here and the uh, sky dome having a lot of energy, we have to change the exposure control. So I select my physical camera and check out what uh, exposure control is suitable. And now you see it's updating uh, correctly. So I guess it's somewhere here uh, at around 10 or so. That's it. Um, here it is. Good. That is the uh, that is the sky dome alone. I could now go up here. Okay, let's do it quickly. I, I'm increasing the settings for my rendering, and we've done that before. Um, usually, it's a diffuse going to five, specular five, and to get the light a little bit further in, uh, this is three. Let's wait for the rendering quickly and have a look what the noise does. Okay, here we are. The picture is finished or it's, uh, it, it's rendered. And you can see right away, although the settings are pretty high and a little bit too bright, of course, but uh, what we get is we get a lot of noise here, especially in the shadow areas from the light coming in. Uh, and the reason is uh, for, um, we, uh, we would have, we, it, it would be necessary to make the settings really, really high because it is a light dome around the scene and uh, simplified speaking, the window is very small and all those samples that I'm creating for my light dome, only a part of it is getting into the geometry. So there must be a way uh, to help the samples to find their way into the geometry and that's called a portal. So what we're going to do is in order to focus the samples only into the, into the window, so from the outside getting in, uh, it's not producing more light or anything, it's just focusing it. We're going to create light portals and put them outside of the window. Uh, to see the difference, I am uh, quickly uh, cloning the window here and uh, bring it back later on when we, uh, when we have rendered the, the new version. So uh, let's get that out of my way too and uh, I'm not going to change the settings and see, how, I'll show you how to, uh, how to place the portal. So I'm looking from the top and the light is coming from the east, so from the, from the right side. You go to create Arnold lights and the, the, the portal is a quad light. It's a simple rectangular light that you place in front of the window. Uh, so you go to quad light, the size, we can adjust it later. So click here in front of the window and pull the light inside the space. The other uh, size is, uh, uh, 
I don't know, four by four meters or so. Uh, let's uh, see it here. It doesn't have too precise, so it's not four by seven, it's more four by four by four meters or so, four by three and a half. In top view, sorry, in top view, I am going to get my light a little bit closer, so don't, get, uh, don't place the portal too far away. Make it a little bit larger. Mine is uh, now is too small. And also in the front view, make sure it's placed uh, at the it's placed at, at the center of the window. Okay, uh, now the, the light is, uh, is uh, placed and now we have to make some changes and that is, first of all, the light that works as a portal, you have to tell him that this is a portal, pretty simple, you just click portal. And you notice that all the settings that have to do with lighting, with, with, with intensity of the light and color and so on, they are grayed out because the light now is not producing any light by itself, but it only takes what the environment produces and that is the sky dome. Uh, so it's not having any parameters by itself, it just takes whatever the sky dome uh, generates and focuses it into the space. The sky dome by itself also has to be switched, so you select the sky dome and right here underneath uh, the sky dome here it says portal mode and there is a uh, portal mode which is usually off and here is an interior only. So it depends on if you are rendering both exterior and interior, uh, interior then you would choose the other option or if you're not using it as a portal then you turn it off but I'm using it only for the interior uh, space so uh, that's why I um, chose, chose interior only. So what I did now is I just rendered the image one more time. I, I just started the active shade mode with the same settings and let's see how the noise looks now. Okay, so here it is. Let's compare it quickly. And you can see there's much less noise. There's still some noise because I have not uh, used the re really high settings and we do that later on when we render it in production mode. But for right now we can tell that there is less noise so the portal really works. We didn't change anything. We just uh, focused the, the, the light to get into the window. It also looks like as if it's a little bit brighter so we might want to take care of that. So either adjust the intensity of the light dome or play a little bit with our exposure control. But in general, this looks very good. I am going to go back to some render settings that make the, uh, that make the active shade a little bit faster. So I'm going to uh, return the diffuse and the specular to the uh, lower settings so it, it's rendering a little bit faster. So it is uh, a little bit too bright so let's take either the the light or the camera. Let's check out the camera. My exposure control is still at 10 so maybe uh, we try 12 or we adjust it later on uh, when we um, try some other methods here. So here is the same thing with exposure 12. Ooh, brightness looks a little bit better now. So that was the sky dome producing a white light and the, uh, and the portals focusing uh, everything outside of the windows. The next thing is we are going to uh, try something else and that is uh, I'm, going, I'm, turning off the, I'm turning off the sky dome, so just select it and turn it off. And I'm also turning off the portal which is I think not necessary because if we turn off the the sky dome, the portals won't uh, get anything. So just to check uh, if I start the active shade now, it's of course, it stays black. You don't need to do that. So the next thing is I would like to place a sunlight. So I want, like, would like to have a, a, a light spot here where there is some direct sunlight getting in through the windows and therefore um, I'm going into a top view and I'm using another Arnold light and this time it's a distant light. So that's a distant light producing parallel rays of light that work great for, uh, as, uh, for, for, for simulating sunlight. So I'm using a distant light and I zoom out a bit and place this light here and make it shine onto the, 
onto the floor, then I go into a front view and I lift up the sunlight to like something like 45 degree angle or so. You can also rotate your scene so you can see what is the sunlight actually seeing. So maybe a little bit more. I want a lot of sun coming uh, through the window. There it is. Um, make sure it's turned on. Modify and turn on. Also quickly check its settings. Uh, usually here the intensity is set to 1 and 8. That is the default. So let's uh, see what the result for this light alone is. Remember all the other ones are turned off. And here is the uh, sunlight alone. So you get this white spot. Of course, uh, with this light only in the scene, you get a lot of noise and uh, yeah, that is but it's perfect for producing this bright spot here. Also, there's some uh, light on some of the objects that looks uh, really nice. Okay, so in combination with the, with the Sky Dome, when we turn it on, it uh, will work fine. Let's quickly try it and see what the preview could look like. So I'm selecting my, uh, my light dome first, turn it on, and also the portal, which is number two will be turned on. Maybe I should start naming things. So that is the, uh, that is the, uh, that's the Sky Dome. Then the Arnold light number two is the portal. And the light number three is the sunlight. So, and uh, all of them are turned on. Uh, now, of course, we will get too much intensity, so it will be over bright because we produce a lot of light here. And uh, so we have to adjust a little bit. Uh, it looks good because we have increased the exposure value to 12 anyway. So that uh, actually took care. It looks quite nice. The light that we do right now is just a first draft because as soon as you place materials in the scene, like darker floors or colors on the wall, you have to adjust the brightness anyway, uh, because it will change a lot. So right now everything is bright and we just uh, try to get rid of the noise and so on. So that is the first method that uh, you could use for lighting an interior scene. So let me quickly repeat. I got a Arnold light. Uh, you got the Arnold light as a distant light here as working as the sun as, as a sunlight. We got the Sky Dome, which is everywhere producing a, a white, uh, the Sky Dome, let's hear it is, selected. The Sky Dome producing a white, white environment. It's set to portal mode interior. And I have placed a, uh, another Arnold light as a portal. All I need to do is I place it. It's a rectangular quad light and I place it and click portal. That means it, uh, it, uh, it just focuses what the Sky Dome does. That is the first method. And I would, like, I would now like to go into a, another method, and that is pretty similar to the one that we have right now. But therefore, I'm going to take the sunlight and turn it off. I'm also going to take the, the sky dome and turn it off. So right now it's black because no sun, no sky dome, and the portal is doing nothing. But now I'm going to take the, the portal light, the, the, the quad light that works as a portal, and I'm going to turn off the portal function. So basically I use it as a large light plane that I place outside of my window. Uh, it also set to light shape visible, so it will be visible here as a white uh, shape. And let's see what that does. Maybe we have to adjust the brightness a little bit because the sky dome is much brighter, but it works. It also lights up the scene. So in order to, to use that to light the whole scene, we have to take the uh, we have to take the exposure control and bring it slightly down. This, uh, yeah, because it's uh, much weaker than the, than the Sky Dome. So select your camera. Uh, Sky Dome, it was 12, so I guess it's more on the 8 side. And here it is. So we almost get the same result, not almost the same, but if, you, if we would choose um, larger, like a, a, a better set, better quality settings, we would even find out that this method, it produces a lot of energy here. So maybe the, uh, the exposure value has to go up a little bit. So maybe nine is more appropriate because we see some of the window, but it, it produces actually less noise because it only uses the light that shines into this, into this window. And it's, uh, it's not uh, using so much noise, especially when you take the light 
and let's select it. That is called, still called portal, but it's not a portal anymore. So if you select it uh, and increase the samples, both of course for the render samples, but you can also increase the rendering samples here. So if you go up to like something 16, then it would get a much better with the higher rendering samples. So that is another method, uh, of course, in combination with the sunlight, if you want some direct light in here. So uh, select the sunlight and simply turn it on. So sunlight, uh, I, what's, I think it's still rendering. So sunlight, okay. Let's close the active shade window. Uh, sunlight and the sunlight is on. I think the problem was with all the, with all the samples. So let's leave that to one. We, we don't have time to uh, watch. So here the sunlight is on. So now it produces the direct light here on the floor. And the rest is coming in from the quad light right out outside the window. So we could try that for quality, compare the quality, and we, if we raise the samples in the render settings, we would also get some nice results there. Okay? Uh, the next method is, uh, I'm, go I'm going back to the portal version. So that means simply uh, all I need to do is select my portal and turn it into a portal again. As soon as I do that, all the settings are, are, are gone. and of course, I turn on my sky dome again, and I, the, the sunlight is anyway on, but the sunlight, I'm gonna keep it off because we just wanna take a look what the, what the portal does. And now I'm just taking the, uh, taking the sky dome and instead of having it in a white color, so um, uh, where's my light sky dome? Instead of having a white color, uh, sky Dome, I'm going to use an HDRI. So I'm going to use an HDRI texture because that also takes care of the sun. So if I correctly place it, the sun will shine in and it will produce the spot here. So make sure that your sunlight is turned off for that. And now let's get a texture in here. Uh, we already know it has to be done in the material editor first and we need the maps general bitmap pull it out and now search for an HDR. So I have an HDR placed in one of the previous tutorials where we use the HDRIs and I'm going to use uh, one that is a cold, no, let's take the sunflower. See, it's a, it's a, it has some clouds on it and it has a, a medium height sun. So here is my HDRI. Let's select it, turn it into an environment map and switch to spherical environment. So now this picture has to go into the sky dome. And remember when you use a, an HDRI in the environment, it pretty much lights the scene. When you use it in a sky dome, it lights the scene as well, but it's even stronger. So we have to adjust again the exposure value for the camera. So here's the bitmap. I'm gonna, in my sky dome, I use a texture and the outgoing node is linked to the, where it says no map, of course, as an instance. And now it is try and error. No, it's not try and error. If we look from the top, uh, if you place an HDRI, usually the sun is in the, is in the middle of the picture. Uh, and that means it ends up being south. So it's right here. All I need to do is I need to rotate it uh, 90 degrees. That is 25% of a whole rotation. It's either minus or plus 25% and then it should shine in here. But that is best checked in the, uh, in the active shade mode. So here's the active shade mode. You can see it's really bright and a little bit warmer because the the HDRI has a warmer light color. So in order to get it, uh, get the brightness a little bit better, I am going to select my physical camera and adjust the exposure value to work together with an HDRI. And that is usually a little bit higher or, oh, there it is, see? I went to 12 and that kind of uh, looks okay. So with 12, uh, I have placed it and now I have to rotate my HDRI so that there is some light coming in. That is done in the material editor. So I'm going to hit M to get the material editor. 
In order to rotate the HDRI image in the background, you need to change the offset value here, and it is the U offset. So U stands for X uh, axis. So uh, in this way, if you like uh, change it a little bit, you should see that the picture moves in the background. It takes a while to update it. And uh, what I want is I'm gonna try is, oh, 0 0.20, no, 0 0.25, that would, work this 0 0.25 or is it minus 0 0.25 we have to check that out okay so that was the method where we placed an hdri image into the sky dome and together with the portals uh, we bring the light of course we can we have to fine tune and set up the uh, set the settings and so on but i would like to show you one more thing one more method to uh, render the interior view and therefore uh, I am simply going to take the, uh, the sky dome and turn it off. So that is my sky dome and turn it off. So that means the HDRI is no longer lighting. The portal is not doing anything. If I render right now, you should see it's, uh, it is not doing anything. So it's uh, black. Um, I am going to use the last method for today. Also, let's take the portal and turn it off so it's not confusing. The lights are all black. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sun positioner. So here under lights, uh, not under R node lights, but under photometric light, I use the sun positioner just like we did in the, uh, in the exterior lighting and place it here in the scene. Um, this time I'm not taking, uh, I don't uh, take care of the position. I'm just uh, making sure that uh, I use an early morning light. So at nine o'clock maybe that looks good. It's coming in about the same uh, angle as my previous sun was. Then I look from the top. Um, I can also rotate my compass so it kind of comes in from the same direction. The big advantage of the sun position is not only that it produces a sunlight, but it also changes the background. So before that, the background was only the visible sky dome. And now it is rendering environment. It is the so-called physical sun and sky environment. That is the blue, uh, the blue gradient that we saw before. So by placing the light in here, we're almost directly looking into the sun. Of course, we might uh, need to adjust the physical camera there. So let's uh, have a look here. So the sun, of course, shines into the, uh, into the spot there. It is a pretty cool, uh, cool color. So if you select your physical camera and go to modify, you might want to adjust the exposure value a little bit so that the whole thing gets more bright. So 10 looks fine. And if you want a little bit warmer color, you can also change the white balance of your camera either with a preset or by doing it uh, uh, doing it manually. The sunlight produces a very cold, uh, so 6,500, I guess, is uh, a little bit warmer. The sun itself can be adjusted. Uh, the, the, um, it's automatically adjusting, so if you, uh, if you change the, the hours here, you will get a little bit more reddish or bluish color. So let's go to an early, more early morning. Here's the early morning. Let's look at the top and make sure the light is coming in a little bit more like this and here we are the, the light coming in from the light positioner okay so if you want it warmer uh, just take the physical camera let's quickly finish it select the physical camera and if you increase the white balance to something like higher than 6500 as you notice it will get even warmer so uh, I, I personally prefer this a lot so let's quickly increase the render settings and see what kind of quality we get with the sun positioner that works actually quite well in Arnold so instead of using the active shade mode I'm switching to a production renderer also the, uh, the size of the production renderer is a little bit larger, but here on the Arnold renderer, the, the, the kind of uh, final quality would be the camera AA 
uh, of six, a diffuse of six. Uh, I, I, I increased the specular, but there's not, that, no, any, not any light here, so let's leave that to two. And the, samp the ray depth here is three. That should be fine. And let's see how long it takes and what the picture looks like. Maybe a little bit too bright, but we can just start. And we are back. The image rendered for uh, 31 minutes. I went a little overboard with the quality settings, but I think it really, uh, it really pays. So you can see there's hardly any noise here in the dark areas. And uh, that was just with the almost most simple uh, lighting version with the, uh, with the sun positioner no portals, no uh, extra things. So that works really well and it's one of my favorites to light an interior space. Even though you don't use the sun position with the, uh, with the location uh, parameters and the time and date, you just rotate it so it uh, fits your needs and then you get, a, uh, you get a nice rendering. Okay, so that was a little overview of the possibilities that you can do uh, by, uh, for interior renderings in Arnold. So let's quickly repeat it. We had the Sky Dome and uh, direct light version where we had a lot of noise. Uh, the next step was we introduced the portals, so the, the Sky Dome together with the portals limited a little bit of the noise. Then we took the portals and actually uh, changed them into uh, quad lights. So we had quad lights, rectangular lights outside. That also was quite nice, not too much noise and also the render time goes down a bit. And then we took uh, the HDRI into the Sky Dome that produces a lot of light, a lot of energy that helps you to get the light deep into interior spaces uh, together with the portals, of course. And the last one was the sky, uh, the sky positioner. Okay, guys, uh, that's it. Uh, try it. There's lots of models that you can download. And if not, just go for the, uh, for the uh, website that I shown you in the beginning. The links are in the description below. When you are already in the description, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a comment and uh, press that like button and I'll see you in the next video.